Today, we're going to explore Windsor Terrace, a small Brooklyn neighborhood that packs a serious punch. Our local guide will take us for amazing dumplings that aren't in Chinatown. A lakeside view in Prospect Park, we'll visit a unique animal rescue and cap it all off with a legendary sandwich. Are you ready to discover Windsor Terrace? Let's go. All right, guys, I'll be honest, I actually had never even heard of Windsor Terrace until I moved to Brooklyn. And I think this neighborhood is going to surprise you a lot. It's sandwiched between Greenwood Cemetery and Prospect Park. And today's guest host knows a whole lot about this neighborhood. Let's introduce Michael. Hello, I'm Michael Heron. I'm a resident here of Windsor Terrace, and I'm going to take you guys around some of my favorite spots to check out. I would say this neighborhood actually reminds me a lot of Park Slope, at least this area of it. Yeah, I like the way that it has this like super small town feel, but also the urban feel of a big city. Yeah, it's a perfect mix. We're in front of East Wind Snack Shop, and Michael, you told me that you're vegan, and this spot has a lot of great vegan options. Yeah, um, the thing about Windsor Terrace is not a ton of like solid vegan places, but there are a lot of little hidden places like this one where you can get my favorite vegan dumplings. They're vegetable dumplings and they're like the best I've ever had. And it says absolute best dumplings NYC, New York Magazine, Time Out New York. So they have stuff for meat eaters and vegans. I'm excited to see what they got. Let's get in there. They offered us hot water as we came in. <laughs> I, might, I might take them up on it, yeah. So this store was inspired by the old coffee and tea houses in old school Chinatown. And those places had uh, lots of counters and places where people, you know, were coming off of work to come and sit and have a quick lunch and have lots of great Chinese snacks. So when I started to develop my uh, vegetable dumpling, I, I still wanted to taste and feel the textures of vegetables. I wanted to celebrate vegetables inside a dumpling. These are the biggest vegetable dumplings I've ever seen in my entire life. They're absolutely <laughs> jam-packed with veggies. Look at that. Let's try it. Let's do it. Let's do it. He's right about those, those big vegetables, right? Like, I'm not used to having that in a dumpling. I've never had a dumpling quite like this before, at least like a, a vegetarian dumpling. So many vegetables crammed in here. Mm. And if you like the texture of vegetables, really like that veggie flavor, this is great. So much going on in here. Wow. Mm. Mm. It's really good. I don't even know what to say. You gotta try it. <laughs> I teach piano lessons in the neighborhood and I walk pre-pandemic, walk house to house and teach lessons. And this was a perfect place for me in like a late afternoon when I've got like a 20 minutes that I need to account for, like pop in and like get some dumplings and just hop into this really cool place. I guess it's probably called Snack Shop. Yeah. yeah. Pop in. Michael, one of the distinctive geographic features of Windsor Terrace is that it's located next to Prospect Park, and that provides a lot of options, right? It does. There's a, a lake that I think you might check out. There's a green market right here on, on Wednesdays only. Um, there's geese, there's raccoons, there's chipmunks. It feels very, very naturey. I run in this park. It's a really, really cool park to live next to. Well, this is nice. It's, uh, it's starting to flurry. First snowfall. Well, no, technically it's 2020. Never mind. I'll say that. Last. last snowfall of 2020, potentially. We have a little flurrying right now. So it's going to make this walk very scenic if it lasts. I feel like Prospect Park is so criminally underrated by New Yorkers. It's such an afterthought by most people that don't live in Brooklyn. Yeah, I agree. And it's designed by the same guy that designed Central, Central Park, if I remember correctly. Yeah and he designed it after Central Park. So that was his practice run. This is the real deal. <laughs> it's super nice to have this right around the corner from where I live, this peaceful lake and this park here that you forget that you're even in New York City. It's uh, one of the gifts of Windsor Terrace. So we're walking over the Prospect Expressway, which cuts Windsor Terrace in half. 
and it makes it really easily accessible to Manhattan if you're driving. Like from where I live, I could just hop right on the expressway with just a couple turns and then drive right into the city. It's great. You can definitely tell you're not in Manhattan anymore when you've got an expressway running right through the middle of your neighborhood. As we explore Windsor Terrace more and more, I'm, I'm seeing the reputation of the neighborhood being sleepy, being very residential. You know, how would you compare it to other parts of New York City? Um, you know, I've only lived for a brief time anywhere else in New York, uh, in the village, and it's definitely a lot more lively in the village. But the thing that I really like about this, and it's partly because I work and teach in the neighborhood, is the community feeling. Like, I know all my neighbors, I know people down the street, I know the people in the shops and that kind of thing. So. What I feel like I trade for sleepiness, I'll get back in like a really cool community of people that watch out for each other, especially with the pandemic. Of course. You know, there were some really cool groups that started, like I was on a Slack channel for people who were willing to go meet someone at the subway who needed someone to walk them home just to make sure they were safe when things were getting really crazy. Um, so it's a cool spot in that way. Yeah, I definitely could see the neighborhood feeling here. I mean, I'd imagine if you lived here long enough, you'd probably run into a lot of the same faces over and over again, right? Yeah, yeah, it's really nice that way. You know, I have to add, this mask was made by my neighbor. She's like one of those little, one of those things where my neighbor's like, oh, I'm making masks. And she asked what kind of design I wanted, that kind of stuff. So it's fun, that kind of thing. Speaking of the community element of Windsor Terrace, I see this in Park Slope as well. Just people leaving old toys. Granted, they're snowy right now, but like old shoes, old toys, old books. And the implication is it's yours to take. Like we actually have gotten a lot of books in Brooklyn just by walking through like this. And that's something I never saw in lower Manhattan ever. You know, Michael, I feel like this neighborhood feel, you could put this in a lot of different spots in New York. These are like row houses. This could be Queens. It's really sleepy. Like I, I would, see what the appeal would be for families for sure. Yeah, it reminds me of like all in the family kind of scenes of Queens, yeah. right? So for our next stop, we wanted to showcase something that had a little bit of community involvement and we are at an animal rescue spot. Now, true story, Adriana and I are actually considering adopting a cat in January. Maybe we'll come back here. We'll see. Michael, tell us more about this place. So this is Sean Casey Animal Rescue. It's kind of like the heart of Windsor Terrace. To me, I'm a big animal person, obviously. But um, it, people like, oh, I found a kitten. There's a squirrel that needs help. This guy is like on the spot with it. And um, like, it's a, there's a shop here. There's animals for adoption. And uh, it's a super cool place. And I did a, a rescue myself with Sean. Um, a couple of years ago where we res rescued goldfish, like hundreds of goldfish. Oh, you're welcome. Um, we're a small shelter, but we do a lot of really big things here. We rescue all kinds of animals, not just your standard cats and dogs, but birds, fish, reptiles, wildlife, you name it, everything comes through the doors here. Um, and we're big supporters of our community. We're one of the only places in New York where any neighbor can walk in any day and volunteer. You could take a dog out for a walk, spend some time with the cats, and just really get to know the animals here as well as the people at the shelter. <laughs> hey, I'm definitely coming back here, guys. Is he for adoption or he just hangs out? No, he's for adoption. Okay. Skittles, bye. Bye, Skittles. Like, no. He's mastered the art of side eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Last but certainly not least on the video, we are going to Brancaccio's. And as soon as Michael told me there was an Italian deli sandwich shop, I was all in. Yeah, this is one of my favorite places right around the corner from where I live. And my favorite thing about this place is I walked in like right after we opened and said, hey, do you have anything vegan? He was like, oh, come on, I just opened. You're already gonna come at me with that. And then he said, uh, actually, this is vegan, this is vegan. So there's tons of vegan stuff here too. Before we go inside, if you're enjoying this video, I wanna make sure you hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, we're getting very close to 200,000 subscribers. So hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you're notified of new videos. Thanks a lot, guys. This place is very tiny, but I can already tell it packs a heck of a punch. Remember my first visit, yeah? I, I, I absolutely remember. You, you were actually my first customer. Hi, my name is Joe Brancaccio. This is Brancaccio Food Shop here in Windsor Terrace on Fort Hamilton Parkway. 
Uh, we do all sandwiches and prepared foods. Started out with the meatball sandwich that I yeah. do. And today, to give you an idea, is the chicken special, which is uh, chicken with artichoke and prosciutto, and it's with a spicy herb sauce. I'm a first timer here. Today specifically, if I wanted a sandwich, what would you recommend I order? Let's do it. Do you have any uh, specifications? Do you have any restrictions I in your have, diet? I have zero restrictions. Okay. Surprise me. Okay, I'm going to make it. Make me a chicken colored artichoke. Pick it up. I just found it hilarious how Joe, the owner, remembered that you were the very first customer here and he remembered it in such a, an <laughs> endearing way. Living in a little smaller community like this where you like, you get to really know the business owners and the people that live nearby, it's super cool. And I can see that Joe is on a first name basis with just about everybody yeah, who's yeah. coming in. So that's, you, know, you get that good neighborhood vibe. And, and I, I just love the amount of care that went into this sandwich. I'm only gonna eat half. It's chicken with artichoke, prosciutto on a sesame roll. And what did you get? This, so this is a variation on what I sometimes get. It's uh, chickpeas. There's some like, I think this is like a couscous type thing. There's some lentils in here. He's got a lot of cool salads and like sides of vegetables and stuff that are vegan friendly here. And if you're not a vegan also, uh, Joe gave us a meatball sub to go. Thanks to him for that. I'm gonna bring that home for dinner, but let's, uh, let's try our, our lunch right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had to close my eyes too. I appreciate the greatness of this sandwich. This takes me back to my favorite Italian delis in New Jersey. It's honestly all about the bread. I think the bread is so important in a sandwich like this. I love this stuff because he's really good at like knowing what to do with vegetables. Like we were talking before about like letting vegetables like represent themselves and be what they are. This is like just solid like plants, um, just like seasoned really simply and really just delicious and tasty. I love it. I was just telling Michael that that sandwich was so good that if you serve that at a fancier restaurant, I think it would easily be worth. 15 to 20 dollars 10 dollars for th that size is a steal in my opinion come visit us in windsor terrace it's a great neighborhood and if you want to check out some of my stuff i'm a musician and a podcaster and a performer i do a bunch of different stuff you can check out my website at michaelheron.com guys leave a comment down below tell us what you thought of this video where would you check out i want to know thank you so much for watching as always